Hello, good morning, class. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we are we are all welcome to today's class. I think can Thank we start you, now? Yes, sir. Okay. So Rebecca, you are made a co-host. Uh, just ensure that uh, you control the class for us. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Somebody's son is up. Who is that? Mary? Mary, why is your hand up? Hello, Mary. Okay. So we'll start today, let's chat with a, a trial question again. So I'm going to share with you the trial question. You study it for a while. Then we'll see the possible responses we can give. So here we are. But we can see the screen now. Yes, yes. sir. Okay, so let's try and go to the question So take your time, read the question. Oh, sorry. Please just excuse me to do something. All right, we can continue. So use the next two minutes to analyze the scenario. So a minute, a minute more.
So we have spent our minutes. So based on what you have read, let's try to respond to the following questions based on this scenario. So the questions are, So question one, what is your response? Sir, please case study. Question one is what? Case study, sir. Case study, okay. Question two. Yeah, to determine if she's in shock. To determine if she's in shock. Yes, please. Is there some with an alternative answer? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Hey, to assess if she can walk well. Okay. To determine if Miss A is in shock. Yes, to determine if she is in shock. Somebody said A, to assess if she can walk well. So that we can't see the deal. The, the option D. Oh, D is to help her maintain personal hygiene. Okay. okay. So which one do we go for? A or C? All right. So or the one who selected A, do you want to just fire your answer? Yes. Yeah. All right. The first concern was the relative assisted head to work. So I think the question also was asking for the first concern. Like when Hello. 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 Yes, continue. Hello, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. To Mr. Yeah. If she can, if she can work well, because the first that is the first Thank assessment. You. Even in our labor world, when they come with the relative holding them, we try to let them assess them to see if they can work well before we can we could help them. If they not, cannot work, that's when we we try to help them. So we do that one first before we assess for the shock. Hello, Thank sir. You. Okay, that is that is a, a Hello, just sir. question. Yes, and yes, you can talk. Yeah, sir, please. Um, the question is saying that she can work with assistance with her relatives. When a relative assists her, she can work. So, so for that one, it's visible when they are assisting her, she can work. So that one, you already know that she can work with assistance. And the question is also saying that she has bled. So more blood has gone already. So I, I would say that her first concern, your first concern would be if the patient is in shock because you check vital signs and see if the patient is stable. For the walking, you've already seen with assistance, she can walk. Thank you. Okay. Sir, please, I also want to add up. My answer is to also um, determine if Mrs. A is in shock. All right. The reason that the scenario is in as a midwife, a client comes in, she's a non-attendant. 
So I'm saying this to uh, their perspective on the world. When the patient comes with this concern, you determine if the patient can, she can work with assistance. But your first concern is, has to do with why she is bleeding. She is bleeding. So the main concern will be able to stop that bleeding. Because if she cannot work and then you don't assess, you don't determine if she's in shock and you are thinking about if she can work, what's, how is that going to save her life? Because the, the scenario says she has bled uh, heavily and with severe cramping pain for six to eight hours. So this is a case that's uh, like, even now that we use a triage, you call, color code her red because it's an emergency case. So she, uh, you determining if she is in shock is the most, is a priority, like is a primary concern that you should have before thinking about whether she can walk or not. Even if she comes in a wheelchair or she was um, brought in a, um, on a trolley by the ambulance, that should not be your concern, should be the bleeding. Why she is bleeding? Tackle that first. If she's in shock, manage her before you can start finding out if she can work or not. Thank you. Okay. So please, I want to add yeah. up to what our sister just said. All what right, of she, uh, she is getting into a state of shock. That is why the relatives were assisting her. So we have to first for the shock. Then you go on with others because they're bleeding heavily. It was stated she bled heavily for eight, uh, six to eight hours. So it means that there have been a lot of blood that has gone out of her. So okay, your line is off. Yes. Please, and to also add up. So please, thanks. We also add up that as midwives, bleeding, um, bleeding is one of the major um, causes of maternal mortality. So that should actually be an utmost concern, because bleeding is one of the causes of maternal mortality. Not you checking if she can walk well or not, because if she dies right now, they won't find out whether the patient could walk well. No. They'll, they'll find out the root cause, which is the bleeding, which is causing her to, to um, which caused her to die. And then as my sister is saying that, they probably because she's in shock, that's why she cannot walk. So that's why she's getting the assistance. So you determining that she's in shock is um, the utmost concern. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, have, you, have you heard the principle of utilitarianism. As you know, we heard of a principle called utilitarianism. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. So, so what, what is it? What does it say? What can you recollect about the principle of utility or the principle of utilitarianism as applied to clinical scenarios. Mm -hmm. Anybody to try? Sir, please, is it about, um, I'm giving, I'm trying, is it about you giving the patient the primary care or treating health? Um, okay. Assessing and then giving the importance of primary care first before any other, I don't know. If I'm, I'm on the right track, but uh, you you are not far from right. Okay. You are not far from right. Rebecca, what do you want to say? Mm -hmm. Rebecca, your hand is up. What do you want to say? All right. So the principle of utilitarianism uh, is applied in this scenario. Hello? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, with the uh, utilitarianism, I think it, it's about you doing the right from the wrong thing, which mm -hmm. will determine the life, which will help, or it which focus on the outcome. So you are doing the right, and at the end, the outcome will be good. Okay, you are on track. Now, but specifically, utilitarianism has to do with 
taking the most useful action that to, to the benefit of the patient. Uh, so amount a mist of nursing and medical actions that you can take, you have to take the most useful action that will help the patient. So we see that from A to A to D, there are all actions that, there are all possible actions we can take in this clinical scenario. But using the principle of utilitarianism, which of these principles will be most useful and will be most beneficial to the patient as early as possible? Uh, so if you want to go by that principle, then C, C is the right answer. I've got that is the most useful action to be taken first based on the scenario that we are all presented with. Yeah, so uh, A, A, you have seen it is an action you can take, but it will not be the most useful at that time, the first action to take, because as uh, some have explained, a patient cannot work, work well it could be due to that the patient is in shock. And you know, shock comes with its own clinical manifestations. Uh, so you have low blood volume. And you know, if you have low blood volume, what happens? Blood cannot flow to the peripheral, such as your eyes. So if in your eyes, there's, there's hypoxia, that means low oxygen. Low oxygen because blood have not reached your eyes and blood is not there. Definitely that alone, that alone, uh, these clinical features of shock will even impair your walking because you become weak. If you become weak, you can't walk. They need to support you. Uh, you can you can even be dizzy. Mm? You can see to walk well. So people definitely have to support you. So yes, A, A, A is an action, but A could be due to the C. Uh, A could be due to, yes, A is just a manifestation of C, something you cannot do because of the manifestation of C. Yeah, all right. So let's let's take the, the last one. What let's take the last one. What is your working diagnosis? Incomplete abortion. Okay. All right, that is that is right. That is right. So Thank you for your contribution. So let's just hold it here for now. For question one. Pardon? I didn't hear the answer for question one. Question one. All right. study. Question one. Uh, people pick case study. Now the reason why I have not commented on question one. It is because of something, but since you have asked me, I'll comment on it. Now, per the scenario that you are giving, this is a pure case study. This is a pure case study. However, though it's a pure case study, we can use it for critical thinking and cognitive skills development. And to use it for critical thinking and cognitive uh, skills development in emergency situations, we can use this same scenario as a clinical simulation. Uh, we can still use it, though it's a case study, but we can use this case study as a clinical simulation so that you will know exactly how to think critically, how to solve, and how to respond to management situation when you have it in emergency situations so i've i've kept quiet on that because of the, the way it is we can use it as clinical simulation we can also use it as case study uh, so in this scenario in order not to confuse you if you will see it again anywhere as a question i will not bring the two as answers i will leave one out are you okay? Okay, yes. sir. Not, not well noted, sir. Uh, which, 
Okay, which is not clear. Yes, I yes, it, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I said primarily, primarily, this is an example of a case study. Primarily. This is an example of a case study. Now, when you go forward, when you go forward to look at other teaching methodologies, it's a case study, but we also have what we call clinical simulations. Hmm? So what I'm saying is that this case study could be used as a clinical simulation. We can use this same case study as a clinical simulation. So what we are saying is that in clinical simulation, we can use a case study in its normal or primary form as this, as you have seen. But we can modify it as a clinical scenario. Or we can still use the same case study, but it could also be a clinical simulation based on the setup that we give you. So that is what I'm saying that, yes, primarily it is a case study. But this same case study could be used as a clinical simulation. So the last thing I said is that the two answers, if somebody chooses case study and another person chooses clinical simulation based on this scenario I've given you, I cannot mark any of them wrong. I cannot mark any of them wrong because I, there are certain things I was supposed to specify to distinguish between case study or I want clinical simulation. So I'm saying that even if you are going to meet the same question, but you will not have the two confusing answers appearing so that you are in a doubt as which one to choose. Uh, so that is that is what I said. All right. So let's go to Sir, what we want to do today. Yes, please. Please, uh, in case of uh, something like this, you, you know it's co computer that is marking the thing. And they will not have any knowledge like the way you are doing so the way you analyze it and you know that, oh, you will not mark anybody like that. Now the computer will just come and do anything and they will give the results to you. Oh, the, if, as I said, is, as I said, the, the computer is fed by human beings. So uh, I just told that if, if you see a scenario like this, before you even see it, these possible answers, these possible answers will not appear like this for you to see in the first place. Uh, it will be sorted out before you see it so that there will not be any confusion as to which one is the right answer. Uh, so uh, it will be solved before you even see it to talk about it going, being marked by a computer. Are you okay? So let's do today's, what we want to come and do. Let's come. So today we want to... So today I want us to look at the assessment. Briefly, let's just look at assessment. Now, after teaching and learning for the whole semester, we all know that we need to do some assessment. And I would like you to look at this picture this picture and then this one which of them do you like this None one, of and them. This one which of them do you like oh you don't like any of them <laughs> You like the first one? Yes, yes. yes. This one is okay. This one is okay. Yes. But you don't like this one. 
No, no this one the space is too much. Right. Is too much. <laughs> I don't let it. <laughs> I don't let it. Eh. <laughs> so this is I don't let it. Hey, pops you up. Okay. The value is the <laughs> That that's fine. That's really okay. So <clears throat> assessment the is the same. Is the same. Okay. That that's okay. so that's it is good. It is good that uh when you are taught using methodologies, then there there should be a form of assessment to find out how you've been able to assimilate or to make use of the information, the new information that you have learned. So assessment, looking at it, is just a form of a feedback. Uh, it's a form of a feedback. So we are using assessment as a form of feedback to, to find out from the students or the learners what they have learned so far. Uh, so assessment helps us to know the progress of the learner and to know what has been attained so far by the learner. So at the beginning of this semester, we started with our midway free education course, theories and principles, and we have learned a lot. Now from the beginning, I gave you an assignment. Then from assignment, we went to do mid-semester exams. And then in some of the lectures, as we have just done, I've given you trial questions to brainstorm and discuss. Then we are getting to next two weeks where we'll be sitting for end of semester examination. So all these are form of assessment. So you see that some of the assessment, you can start them before you even begin your lecture. Others, in the process of the lecture, you do the assessment. And then you can wait till the end of the whole course. Then you do an end of course semester, which we do the end of semester examination. So basically, we are going to look at these things which are assessment. So assessment is just to give us a feedback. It's a form of feedback. We want to know what you have learned so far, your progress, and what you have been able to attain so far. Now, in assessment, we are saying that for an assessment to be effective, the assessment should be timely. Assessment should be timely. It should be content-specific. And then the assessment should also be informative. So when we say timely, timely, the, the students are giving information. So it means that the time of the assessment, it should not be too far from the time that the students have attained the information. So let's take it that you have done this course and will be ending next two weeks or next week. Then I decide that you write the end of semester examination next year, June. You write the end of semester examination next year, June for the course that you have done this year. Will, will, will I be fair to you? No, sir. <laughs> Why? I will not be fair because it is not timely. We know that information information depreciates with time. Uh, information depreciates with time because on daily basis we are accumulating new information. Uh, we are accumulating new information, so it means that if you learn the new information and you are not assessed or you are not asked to give a feedback within a certain period that you have learned the information, the likelihood of you forgetting it is higher. So that's why we are saying the assessment should be timely. It should come at the right time. 
uh, assessment should rather be timely. Then you also realize that this timely assessment, people who write, let's say, supplementary examinations, you see that it is not easy to perform so well in a supplementary examination because of the timing. Uh, so if, for example, the courses that you did uh, in May, the courses that you did in May, and you wrote the end of semester exam in May, if you are to do the supplementary exams, maybe hopefully ne next year, you see that it will not be easy to perform in the supplementary exam because the timing is, is not the best. Looking at the time you learned it and the time that you are asked to be tested on it again or to be assessed on it again, there's a vast difference and it will not be the best. So it will not be the best. Then content specific. Content specific. My co-host, uh -huh. good. Assessment should be content specific. You know, the, the last time I was watching somebody's status and uh, the person was describing lecturers and let's say teachers in general. Teachers who teach you how to count A, B, C. A, no, teachers who teach you one, two, three, four. But when it comes to assessment, the teachers will not ask you to count one, two, three, four. The teachers will ask you two times two, which is four. Meanwhile, the teacher did not teach you two times two. The teacher only taught you how to count one, two, three, and four. So it was funny, but it shows that it means that we teach you simple way. But when we are doing assessment, we rather make it so high that we even bring things that maybe you have never seen before. Is it, have we experienced that before? Yes. 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 So we have all experiences as learners in one way or the other. It, it has happened. Uh, but we are saying that the learning should be content, the assessment should be content specific. So it means that uh, let the student know exactly what you want them to achieve at the end of the day. And let them know by the objectives of the course. Uh, so the objectives are there. You have to learn A, B, and C. And then based on the objectives, assessment should follow suit. Uh, assessment should not be out of the objectives. So that's what I was saying, don't set questions out of the syllables. So an effective assessment, yes, should be content specific as well. Then an assessment should also be informative, informative. So what it meant is that the information I give to you, it should be enough. It should be enough for you to understand exactly the feedback I want from you. So I... The information should not be scanty. If I give you little information, you are likely not to understand the question. And if you don't understand the question, you will not be able to give me the exact feedback I want. So in creating scenarios, in creating questions, we have to, as much as possible, all the information that the learner needs to be able to respond to the question, we should include all the information. So that's why I say that, yes, assessment should also be informative. So that you have all the available information to analyze and then to be able to give a good feedback. So basically, we are saying that assessment should follow this. It should be timely, it should be content specific, and it should be informative in nature. So what to go on to look at Purpose of assessment. Purpose, general purpose of assessment. Why do we assess the purpose? Why do we assess? Now, for the purpose of assessment, we have three. And we have three. And you see that they are almost all the same. It's just that we're using some 
adjectives of, for them. But assessment could be assessment of learning. You are assessing learning, assessment of learning. You also have assessment for learning and assessment as learning. These are the purpose of assessment. Assessment of learning, assessment for learning, and assessment as learning. So I want to take these. If you say assessment of learning, what exactly are you referring to? So assessment of learning. Why do we do assessment of learning? So to assess learning, the assessment of learning, it is mostly grade based. That is a major word. It is mostly grade based. So in this kind of assessment, we are specifically using grades. Uh, we, are, we are using a grading system. And at the end of the day, Everybody knows your grade level. Uh, you know your grade level. So that's assessment of, of learning. Of learning. We want to now grade you at the end of the day. We want to use grading. So to use grading, you realize that common examples that can fall under this assessment of learning. Which type of assessment do we use great? So the first common one you know is what? Exams. Uh, so exams. Examination is assessment. It's an assessment of learning. And at the end of the day, you are all giving your grace. You are all giving your grace. We have what called portfolios. Portfolio. It's not only exam we write for grace. You can only do a portfolio. Now, uh, a portfolio is just a collection. It's a collection of activities over time. It's a collection of activities over time in a document form. Collection of activities over time in a document form. I will say it is a gallery. It's a gallery of activities over time which could be in a document form so the document could be hard paper document or it could be soft copy document so basically in portfolio what we are saying is that as midwives you go to work on daily basis now when you go to work on daily basis you have a book uh, you can have a book, a very nice book that you can use at your portfolio. So what do you write inside that nice book? What you do is that any, any clinical scenario that you encountered or any clinical experience that you had for the day, which is worth noting, then you write it. You write it in that particular document at the end of the day. So you can be writing over a period of time. You can write over a period of time. Please, who is that? So you can be writing over a period of time and maybe after a month, after a month, you can take back that book that you have used and you will see the important events the important clinical event that happened to you as a midwife over one month at the at the work site, you'll be amazed of the important clinical events that took place over one month. So it it helps you. It helps you to also assess how far you are improving upon your 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 learning. So if you are a midwife, for example, the first day or the first week you encountered a clinical situation which you were not able to manage well, then you note it down, you write it, and you note the case, you note what you did in your portfolio. Then you will see that over time, after a month, 
if you really follow that portfolio and you are presented with another situation, similar one, that if only you keep the portfolio and you read over it and meditate upon it, you'll see that you, you'll be better. You can grade yourself and say that, oh, I have now improved. I'm now better than before. Uh, so that's a portfolio. A portfolio is in so many forms. It could be at the website. You could also have a portfolio of even church church going or church activities and or going to mocks. You can have a portfolio, a religious portfolio. So what I'm saying is that you can have a religious portfolio. You can have a clinical portfolio. You can have even social lifestyle portfolio where you go for the entire month. You know the places that you've went for, the funerals you've attended, the birthday parties. All these things are just portfolios. As far as you have a book, you are recording all your activities in it. It's a portfolio. Yes. Uh, Evelyn, your hand is up. Evelyn. Okay. So no, sorry, final... mistake. Okay, sorry. So final projects. Uh, so final projects to we grade them. So as you have been giving your topics, you have been giving your supervisors. That is a final project, and it is an assessment of learning. Uh, so let me just take this one to touch on it, please. Those of you that till now, you have not even reached out to your to your supervisors for the project. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, reach out to your supervisors. There is no time. Uh, there's no time. If you really want to have it easy, reach out to your supervisor now. So that by March, by March, you are done with your project work. It's very important. Because next year, April, you're writing end of semester exam, and that's your last semester. Com combining that exam with your project is difficult. Please try and finish by March. I'm begging you. Reach out to your supervisors for the project work, and let's finish as early as possible. Hard. So we also have standardized tests standardized test that uh, it could be national test, it could be district test, all these are just, and they grade them. So all these are assessment of learning. Three hands were up. Do you want to say something? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, so one of you can talk. Uh -huh, sir, please, I have it in the chat box, but you didn't see it. I wanted to know whether the case study that we do it in school can be okay. example of portfolio. The case study that, yeah. So the case study that you did and presented to NMC is that not it? Hello. Yes, yes that's sir. what she's referring. Yes, yeah. So the, the the case study that you did in school. Yes, yeah, the case study could be an example of a portfolio because you were assigned to a woman over a period of time. And within that period of time, on daily basis, on daily basis, you were recording your events, your clinical event, your interaction with the woman from beginning to the end. And you were recording them in a book. At the end of the day, you made a book out of it. So that could be a form of portfolio. Now, portfolios are in different forms. Aside the type, we also have personal, we have personal portfolios, corporate portfolios, and the rest. Uh, so that is that is an example of a portfolio as well. Uh, but the one I was explaining was actually a personal, a personal portfolio to yourself. Uh, but you could also have a portfolio that you can do on corporate levels or on other individuals. So, yes, please. So it's important to keep a portfolio, actually. Everybody, it's important to keep a portfolio. You could even use only pictures, pictures as portfolio. It could be mixed as well, too. All right, there were three hands. Is that all, all there? Yeah, please. What of diary? Is portfolio the same as diary? Yeah, portfolio could come in the form of a diary. A diary 
a diary is you, you can use your diary as a portfolio. Uh, but mostly in the in the diary, you realize that the diary is too broad. Say that your diary cut across all aspects of your life. So your social life is in that diary. Your academic life is in that diary. Everything of yours is in that diary. So it really do not make it a, an effective portfolio. Uh, the diary, though it could be a portfolio, but it's, it doesn't serve as an effective portfolio. A portfolio is actually specific. Uh, it's specific about an area of your life. You want to track an area of your life. Uh, so we, so the diary is a multiple form of portfolios. So if you are selecting a portfolio on academics, then it should just be a portfolio on academic. You write on an academic portfolio. And if you are selecting another portfolio on your clinical practice as a midwife, then that portfolio is just for clinical practice as a midwife. It, it helps you to track events and to see, to grade yourself over time. So Dorothy yes. Please new um off your video, Dorothy Brenu. Please off your video. Please off your video. Thank you. So yes, my sister, diary is a form of portfolio, but it is not it is not a good or an effective portfolio. Portfolio should really be specific on an aspect of your life. It should just be specific like that. So in your in your house, in your room as an individual, you can have several, several diaries, and each diary will represent a portfolio on an aspect of your life. That makes it more effective. The last hand, three hands, or I can continue now. Okay. So in the portfolio, I don't understand. No. So I don't understand. <laughs> Where don't you understand? Please, where don't you understand? Let me let me see. The portfolio. Actually, I don't understand everything about the portfolio. If you say you don't understand everything, I don't also understand. What do you mean by that? <laughs> uh, as a portfolio. Mm. I don't I don't get it. Okay, so a portfolio, a portfolio is a collection. Is a collection of activities. Mm? It's a collection of what activities in a document form. A collection of activities in what a document form. So we said the document form. It could be hard copy document. It could also be handwritten hard document or it could also be soft copy in a computer. Now, we are saying that portfolios touches on a specific aspect of your life. So if you are a midwife, you can have a portfolio of clinical practice. And this portfolio, it recalls, it recalls important daily activities happening to you as a midwife in the world. It recalls important daily activities happening to you as a midwife in the world. And the portfolio, we are saying that it could be used as great because as you record the important daily activity that happened to you as a midwife, and you constantly read that your portfolio and reflect on it, you become a better person. It grace you, it moves you, from a starter and you are developing, you are assessing yourself as you go on with your portfolio. But if you don't have a portfolio of clinical practice, you the same scenarios you are meeting as a midwife and you do not manage them well, you keep on repeating the same mistakes because you don't have a portfolio that guides you to know, to actually know that, okay, this is what I made today. This is what I did right. This is what I did wrong. So if I made the same thing, then this is the best way to do it. If you don't have a gallery of that clinical practice as a portfolio, you will just be sleeping and going to the world every day, sleeping and going to the world every day, 
the same conditions are coming to you and you are still making the same management mistakes over and over and over because you are not even you are you are not assessing yourself that's what we say it's a form of assessment you're not even assessing yourself based on what you are practicing so yeah that, that is a clinical portfolio it's just a collection of important activities at your clinical center. hello sir now are you okay Yes, this sir. one is up. So, sir, please. Uh, uh -huh. the portfolio, so, with the clinical, uh, with the clinical portfolio that okay. you are seeing. So, supposing yes. today I, I went to uh, the clinic or the hospital and maybe I had PPH, am I going to record the management of PPH in my book or what I was not able to do? Uh, in the PPH management, which was wrong, that I have to record, or the okay. right thing that I did that I have to record, or I'm I'm supposed to report uh, record the right and the wrong things that I did. All right. Okay. So in in a portfolio, generally, because you want to use it as a form of learning or assessment assessment of learning what we do is that you write as much as possible you try to write so if it is management of pph you just try to make a simple description of the case uh, you just try to make a simple description of the case what you did as a person as a midwife in that case what you did then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you look at, you have described the case, you have described the case, what, what you are presented with brief in your portfolio. You have also described what you did as a person, as a midwife in that case. So all this is part, you enter it in the portfolio. You just briefly describe what the case is, what did you do? What were your intervention? That is it. So that is, these two should be there. Then going forward, what you did not do is also there. But you, you are here writing what you did. But to use it as learning, at the end of the day, you have to now also go and now open, open your portfolio and reflect on it. What the case you had and what you did did it meet the standard? Mm? Did it meet the standard? So normally portfolios are used mostly for reflection. Uh, portfolios are used for what? reflection. So as far as you have the case and you know what you did, you can now use reflection, reflection Have I as, as part of the portfolio. Yes. Okay. Yeah, can see. All right, so please, uh, let's proceed so that we don't waste so much time. Portfolio is one thing that you could be taught. Uh, you could be taught as a full topic. Please mute. Please mute. Uh -huh. Hello, sir. So, yes. So please, can you say what we write in the uh, the word? The nurses knows is an example of a portfolio. What you write in the word as nurses, nurses, nurses knows. Yes, please. It's an example of portfolio. Yes, it's an example of portfolio because we can use that to grade to grade the activities of the nurses in that word. Uh, so we can use that to grade the activities of the nurses in that word. If there's any legal legal problem, what you write as a portfolio could be used to determine whether you are actually effective at work or not. So that is a general portfolio. The, the, what you write in your nurse's notes is a general portfolio, but it is not describing into detail as a person, as a person, what you have done. Uh, it is just describing generally what has been done for all the patients. But the, the major thing is that it is used as a form of grade. Uh, what you write alone in the nurse's notes, we can use it to grade the performance of the nurses in that world, 
and we can we have different walls. Uh, so if you collect the nurses notes from different walls, we can use that one alone to even assign each word a great performance. So that's basically what we are trying to say. Uh, it is okay. assessment thank of you. learning. We are we are usually based on grace. Yo, thank you, sir. You are welcome, please. Now let's go to the second one. Okay. Assessment for learning. Assessment for learning. Oh, uh, this person who is tempting our screen, can you exit yourself? Who is that? The one who has stained our screen. So assessment for for learning. That is that one is an ongoing, and it is actionable. That means it is an action. So assessment for learning it is still an ongoing process, and it is an action. So what we are saying is that if we are creating an assessment for learning, creating an assessment for learning, it is in the process. So in the process of doing your teaching you come in with that particular assessment i come in with that particular assessment so if i use questioning for example questioning is a form of assessment and questioning is an assessment for learning so as i'm teaching you right now then i ask you basic questions so questioning as a technique is an assessment for learning because it is it is an ongoing process and it is actional. So if I teach you for 20 minutes, I ask you two or three questions based on your responses. Based on your responses, then I will know exactly how to continue teaching. So that's why we say that we have questions such as, what do students still need to know? So I teach you for 20 minutes, I ask you questions based on your feedback of the questions i will know exactly what you need what you need to know again well juliana juliana stop your video okay juliana juliana Uh, but there are so many of them. I'm confused. There are so many Julianas. Asari. I don't know which of them. G Juliana, stop. Is it Juliana Asari? Juliana. Juliana Coco. Or uh, F5 Juliana. Any of you, please stop. Stop your video. Or uh, let me just. Sir, so please, Coco video is on mute. Hmm. Okay. So in assessment for learning, mostly we use questioning techniques. Yes. It's not only questions we use. We can even use brief, brief quiz and discussion or brainstorming. So but mostly questions, as I said. So the second question is, that what do students take away from the lesson? So at the end of the day, you are questioning them during and so it is an ongoing type of assessment. It's an ongoing, ongoing type of assessment that we look at. Mm -hmm. Then let's look at the last one, assessment as learning. Assessment as learning. So that one, it is an active, an active form of assessment. And when we say active form of assessment, it involves critical thinking, problem solving, and there are specific objectives to be achieved by the students, which will measure their progress. So the last time I know when we're doing teaching methodology, people were asking questions based on assessment and then teaching methodology whether they are the same. And uh, 
I know I responded that you can use assessment as a teaching what methodology. You can use assessment as a teaching methodology. And that's where people were looking at it. So assessment is used as a learning itself, a form of learning, a form of learning. So as I said, instead of me teaching you the material, before I teach you the material, I can first give that material to you as an assignment to go and do first. And that is that is an assessment. Uh, that's an assessment, which I've used as a teaching methodology. So if I also give the discussion, the discussion, I give the questions and I have not taught you the course. I've not taught you that topic, but I said, do the question, do the discussion, write, write your answers and present to me. It is, it is a form of assessment, which I've used as a form of teaching as well. And this one, we are saying that these ones, they make the student to think. Uh, they make the student to think. So there's development of critical thinking. And you are solving problems. You are solving problems. So that is why we say that assessment could be used as learning. Uh, good. So assessment as learning. That's what we refer to. So you realize that uh, at the beginning of the semester, we give the course outline, the objectives we want you to learn. Then based on the course outline, you, you could just be given an assignment in any of the course outline. And you will not be taught. Uh, you will not be taught on that particular topic. But you are rather given that topic Instead of teaching, you are being given it as an assessment. And it is it is it is a, a way of teaching as well. Though it's an assessment, it's a way of teaching as well. It's, you have learned through that. Though the teacher have not actually stood to lecture you or to take you through it. So assessment, yes, could also be learning as well. Now, the, the important thing we have to look at is what are now the types of assessment? specific types of assessment specific types of assessment and we will we'll end our lecture here after this the types of assessment that's all i want you to know about assessment what assessment is the purpose of assessment and then the types of assessment that we have so there are several there are six six types of assessment there are six types of assessment we have. So these, uh, I've put it in a table form for you. I uh, put it in table form uh, because of lack of time. Uh, but if you read, if you read the handout, it everything is well explained there. Uh, but for presentation, it's in the form of a table for easy understanding. So we have them, the first three are on the board here. So let's look at them, what, what they refer to. So we have diagnostic assessment, criterion reference assessment, and then the first one. What is the first one? Summative. Summative assessment. Summative assessment. Summative assessment. So one to just basically look at it. When you hear of summative assessment, what is it about? Diagnostic and criterion referenced assessment. You look at them briefly. So summative, summative. Summative means what? At the end. Is that not it? Yes, summative means a summary of everything you have learned. So at the end, so mostly these assessments are given at the end of learning the entire material. Mm. It's given at the end of learning the entire material. You are not assessed in the process of learning the material. You will be taught everything from A to Z. Then 
this type of assessment, it comes at the end. After we have finished the last thing, then you assess on it. So we are saying that. So these type of assessment, mostly we use them for district exams, for national exams, or even international exams. So now I would say they are standardized tests. Uh, they are standardized tests. So they are standardized means that these are kind of assessment we do at the end of the learning, which cuts across different different learners, uh, different learners. And we, it helps us, it helps us to know across different learners the material that has been learned and the effectiveness of the material. So it measures students' progress. It measures students' progress. So let me give you this uh, group discussion. Group discussion, uh, surprise quizzes, mid-semester exams, end-of-semester examinations, which of the four which of the four could be classified under summative assessment? End of semester. End of semester exams. Uh, so end of semester exams. Uh, it's a typical example of summative assessment at the end of the learning. Now, we also have what we call diagnostic assessment. So the word diagnose, diagnose. So there's a there's a problem. You want to know what the, exactly the problem is and how to tackle it. So what, what is now diagnostic assessment? So it helps you to get information that you need about the student knowledge and how to engage the class. So mostly diagnostic assessment their baseline, their baseline assessment, base, baseline assessment. So baseline assessments means that initial assessment that you undertake to know student knowledge before you even teach them. So their baseline assessment, initial assessment before you even start teaching you can do those kind of assessment. So those of us, most of us have gone for workshops before and you will realize that uh, at the beginning of the workshop, before the workshop is even started, they do a form of assessment. And what, what is the name of that assessment? Pre-test. Pre-test. Uh -huh. They do a pre-test before the workshop is even started. So the pre-test that is done before the workshop is started, it's just a perfect example of a diagnostic assessment. Uh, we, we want to know, uh, so the facilitator want to know your knowledge as a participant before knowing exactly what to now give out or how to engage the class going forward. So yeah, that's a diagnostic assessment. You just want to diagnose the problem before you even start giving. Then what is the third one? Somebody raise their hand. Deborah, your hand is up. Sir. Hey. Please, yes, suppose please. You, give an, you give a scenario. Okay. Uh, let's say the ANC clients, so you want to give health talk, but <clears throat> you ask them to voice out what they know. And in the answers, you bring diagnostic assessments and baseline. Mm -hmm. Which one is appropriate? And baseline information. So which one is appropriate? Baseline, baseline assessment. <laughs> It's a diagnostic word, assessment. So it to be, it to be wrong, it to be wrong. 
Are you okay? It'd be wrong for me to bring a question and, and bring diagnostic assessment and baseline assessment. No. Hey. So my sister, the two will not come at the same time. Uh, so diagnostic assessment alternatively is baseline what assessment. Uh, they, are, they are baseline assessment. Assessment that we do before we even engage the class or we engage the audience. And uh, it is for us to know their knowledge level so that the information that we have to give, we will know where to start from. Uh, because you have already prepared your information. So if I prepared your information after the diagnostic assessment, you might have to add up certain information or you might have to subtract certain information from it. So yes, it's a baseline assessment as well. So the two will not appear concurrently as possible answers. My sister, are you okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yes, please. You are welcome. Then we have the third one, criterion referenced assessment from criteria. So criterion from the word criteria. Criteria. And now when we say criteria, criteria means that your performance is being measured using a standard. Your performance is measured using a standard criteria. So you ask, what is the criteria for this? And so every activity that you do, there's a criteria for it. There's a standard that you have to meet. So we have certain assessment that are standard specific. If you don't meet those standards, you can't be admitted or you cannot be seen as being passed or acquired the necessary information. So we are saying that they compare the score of an individual student to a learning standard, to a learning standard, and then performance level. So the, you see that the practical exams that you do, the final practical exams that you do, those final practical exams is based on certain criteria. You must meet a step by step. And before your score, you can be deemed past the practical exams. It means that you should be able to meet all the criteria laid down for that particular task. So that, that one, your, pass, your score in the practical exams is a criterion reference assessment. Uh, it's a criterion. So any form of practical exam we do, we say it follows this. We can describe it as a criterion reference assessment. But what we are assessing you, your score is being measured to a standard, which is accepted. And we know that practical exams, you must score 55, uh, 55 to pass. And then the 55, there's a criteria to even score that 55. So it's not this one, it's not about other students around them. So let's use this one. It's irrespective of the performance of other students. So what we are saying is that in this criterion reference assessment, if you are 10 people, you are 10 people they are assessing using a standard, a learning standard. It doesn't matter the scores of other, other students. The focus is that, are you able to meet the, the standard that has been set? So if it's out of 55 and you are 10 in a class, and out of the 55, uh, nobody, nobody had up to 55. The highest person maybe had 53. The highest person had 53. So in this assessment, we are not measuring your 53 up by other students. Maybe, maybe some of your colleagues had like 30 or 40. So we are not going to say that the one who have 53, oh, you have done so well. 
that is not how we are going to measure you. Because though you have got the 53, but if we are using a, crit a criteria to, to, the criteria we are using is that even though you have gotten 53 and you have performed better than your colleagues, but you have still failed, no, none of you have actually passed. So none of you have met the criteria that we have set. So in criteria, it, your performance is not measured against other students' performance, but rather your performance is only measured based on the specific standard criteria we have, whether you are able to meet it or not. Uh, so that's the, 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 the difference that I want you to get. There is another one which is about other students. So that's why I'm taking my time to let you understand this one. In Criterion, the focus is on whether you have met the standard set irrespective of the performance of other students. Uh -huh, that is yes, our focus. Irrespective of the performance of other students. Say. Please, some hands are up. I can hear, yes, now speak. Yes, sir. Say, please, I want to ask if appraiser can also yes. be a form of criterion reference. Okay, appraiser that you do. Now, appraiser is a form of criterion reference assessment because there are, there are certain targets you have to meet and you must meet those standards before you are, your performance is being rated as meeting the standards or not, irrespective of your colleagues, irrespective of your colleagues. So if we come to a unit and we do appraisal, what we are saying is that it is possible that we can do the appraisal. And if we re really follow the criterion, maybe out of five people in that, in that unit, none of you may even meet the standard, the appraisal standard. So yes, in that case, though you have all high scores, you have all high scores, and some have even scored more than the other person. But if the scores, you have to be scoring a maximum of five, a maximum of five, and we take about 10, 10 standards, 10 standards, and you, you are scoring one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You realize that at the end of the day, all of you might not even be able to meet the set standard. If there's a pass mark, you might not all be able to meet that particular pass mark for us to say that, oh, okay, based on what we have uh, appraised you on, you are actually doing your work well or you are not doing your work well. So yes, uh, it is it is a form of a criterion reference assessment. Yes, there another hand, yes, you can unmute. Sir. Yes. Please, it's about uh, this imposed test. I don't know whether it will fall under diagnostic assessment or semantic assessment. The post test. Yes, please. Oh, post test will fall under summative. Okay, sir. Yes, please. It will fall under sir. summative. Yes, please. Uh, the last person. Yes, sir. Actually, the question I wanted to um say that so per what we have learned, um yes. when we go for workshops, they give us pre tests yes. and post tests. So it yes. means that they use both the summative assessment and the, the diagnostic assessment. When we go yes, for that was what I wanted no. to. Yes, yes, please. That that yes. that's a good conclusion. Uh, so at the beginning, they try to give diagnostic assessment. Then after the entire workshop, then they do the summative assessment at the end. So if that is true. Thank you. All right. So let's look at the other three left. Okay, can you see the the first one? Yes, a formative assessment. Formative. Yes, formative assessment. Form formative sir, please, assessment. Please, there is writing on the screen. We can't see it very well. We are, we have as a person to. Exit and the person refused. 
Okay, I'll I'll just take it through. So formative, formative, formative assessment. It is an ongoing assessment. It is an ongoing assessment. It happens whilst you are still learning the information. Uh, so it happens while you are still in the process of acquiring the information. Formative, forming, while you are still being formed, formative. So you, you look at it this way. Formative assessment, it is between diagnostic assessment and summative, if you want to take it like that. So you do diagnostic assessment. Then when you start with the material, in the process of the material, all other assessment you are doing in the process, they are all formative assessment. Then at the end of the entire thing, if you now want to give at the end of assessment, then that's summative. So we are saying that the formative is an ongoing type of assessment. Uh, it is in the process, the process that you do it. And why there are so many of them. So there are so many of them. So it, 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 helps, it helps you to adjust your teaching strategies in the process. So in the process of teaching, I teach you the first topic. And then I decide to give you a, a test on it a quiz, maybe a quiz, just a class quiz. Then based on the outcome of the class quiz, I can re-emphasize on the first topic before I move to the second topic. So, or based on the first quiz that you write on the first topic, it will help me to know whether the specific teaching methods I'm using, you are understanding or not. Uh, you are really understanding or not. So I have to change the way I teach. After teaching the first topic, I give you assessment based on your performance. It helps me, the teacher, to know whether I'm the, whether I'm on the right path and the teaching methods I'm using, whether they are beneficial to you or not. Then I have to adopt. Now, uh, for example, there was a class that I, I was teaching some years back. And first, I was using, mostly I was using lecture for them. Then I realized that after the first quiz, when I conducted the first quiz, <clears throat> a lot of them did not perform well after the first quiz. So I have to go back and change my teaching methodology. And what was the teaching methodology I have to change? One, I have to work on my slides. I have to make sure that my slides now contain a lot of pictures. And so instead of giving the slides only words, 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 I will not use words to teach again, but I'll rather use mostly pictures and videos to teach. So that is that is formative assessment. Uh, in the process, I have actually as a student and I've changed my own teaching strategies as a lecturer. Then there was that same class, there was another class I realized that that class too, they were good. But if you come for the next lecture, unless you give them surprise quizzes, they will or if you ask them just questions, they will forget everything. And so looking at that, that class dynamics, every lecture I can, before you do, they they know now when I just enter the class, they then so say say number one. You see. And it helped them. You have to put them on their tool to learn. And they were happy with, with that. So that's formative. It's in the process. You start, you assess, then you improve upon yourself before you even finish teaching them the material at the end of the day. So I've just given examples that we can use as summative, eh, the formative. Uh, so quizzes, surprise quizzes, all, all those assignments, all those are just common examples of the formative. So uh, please, what of mid-semester? 
Yes, so mid semester is formative as well. Uh, so the middle of the semester, the mid semester results you get based on the responses of the students, you you may have to go back and teach certain topics again before you proceed. Or you may have to modify the way you teach. If we're using pure lecture, then you have to you have to move away. Or uh, depending on the class, depending on the class, you may have to be using a lot of uh, practical scenarios to teach. Uh, a lot of and sort of theory, 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 coming to tell them that uh, assessment refers to this and this and this. You rather practicalize it by giving them something to do. Then when they finish, you say, okay, this is now a form of assessment. So yes. That it is, it is a, it is that is also formative assessment. They are very important to change your teaching strategies in the process. Then the fifth one, I've set if so the I've set if assessment. Uh, so I've set if assessment. Now this one it involves two steps. The objective assessment involves two steps of assessment. We have a first assessment and a second assessment. So in this kind of assessment, we are trying to look at you, 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 you first carry out the assessment. That's in the process. So I teach you the material. I teach you the material. Then I assess you on that material. Then I realize that, hmm, if I want to really grade you based on the first material, you might not be well graded. So I decide that, let me assess you for the second time. Now in assessing you for the second time, I may not necessarily give you the same material, but I'll give you a different form of material which relates to the first one. Now, to give you an example, we you realize that if you are doing a theory course, for example, you are doing a theory course on, okay, let me just take this simple example. Let's say you are, you are a musical student. You are studying music at the university. Then they give you assignment on music to write. It's a theory assignment on music. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that this theory assignment on music, the person did not do it well. The person did not perform well. Then you decide that, okay, since you do not do, you are not too good at the theory assignment in music, do a second assessment in music. But this time around, you are going to dance and record a video of your dancing skills. And I'll use it as assessment. And you realize that when you give this, this this second assessment, the person goes practically. When the person comes back with the ass, 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 assignment, you see that the person score high marks. The person score high marks. But the first assessment, which was a theory part, the person could not score more marks. So this kind of assessment is actually good. It's actually good when you know the students that you have. It is not all the students who can actually pass the theory, the theory assessment well. There are certain type of assessment that you have to do the theory, but you have to move away from the theory and give them a second assessment, which is practical. And you will see differences in the scores of the students. You see a lot of differences. But the thing is, that at the end of the day, you want them to improve upon themselves and to achieve certain goals. So this kind of assessment, mostly in our African setting, we do not see that much in our African setting. But if you go to the other countries, they use this assessive assessment so well for their students. Say that if a student do not perform well in theory, they give you a different assessment, which is not mostly theory, but like something you can think practically and it is recorded and they take it. So they, they compare these two results and that is what we call isative 
assessment. Now, coming to our level, you realize that most of you, practically, you are good. And not only practical, but you are good in other aspects of your life. So what we are trying to say is that if we give an assessment on cooking skills, as assessment on cooking skills, theoretically, you are doing nutrition. And the nutrition you are doing, you are giving an assessment on cooking skills, theoretically. You do the assignment and you cite that. Maybe you cite for the exam, you not perform well. Now, what this one is saying that, why don't we give you the same assignment on cooking skills, but in a different way? Eh? In a different way. This one, we don't want you to sit in an exam hall, but rather go and do something on cooking skills and bring, and we'll compare. Whether is it that theoretical, you are not good at cooking skills, or practical too, you are no good at cooking skills. So we are trying to compare the two results. And that makes it a assertive assessment. Okay. So can somebody give examples? Can you also give examples of assertive assessment or your experience of assertive assessment that you have witnessed at your various places? Yes, Rita. Okay, so please, I was also thinking of... Um... In our facilities, yes, like our activities that we carried out. For mm -hmm. example, uh, CWC, we do uh, static weighing sessions. So we realize that maybe we are not getting our target. So we change it by going to homes or maybe doing more pubs. Can that one also be uh, as obsessive assessment to know our uh, to increase or change? our way of doing it to get to the goal of attaining the target. Okay, so here, what, what is your goal? To increase our target. Like we didn't get, uh, you do start a clinic, so you don't get the your target. You don't get okay. the number you want at the mm -hmm. end of the month or uh, whether uh, monthly or quarterly. So. Okay. You try to change your uh, approach by okay. either doing more pubs or uh, going for homes, tracing your defaulters to go to homes and then render the services. At the end of the day, might increase your targets or help you get the goal that you want at the end of the month. Yeah. Okay. So let me take the second person too. Somebody, some other two people, yeah. you ask them. Let me take your questions. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh -huh. So please, I also want to um say about the um the I uh, um assessment. Okay. Can we also say the practical exams we do during our um our NMC and like when you're going to write the licensing exams? Um, can we also say that the like that's the labor ward assessment for we the midwives and in primary the nursing practicals that we also do? Can it also mm -hmm. be placed under the accepted assessment, even though we still write the theory, but then we we are still given um the practical session to do? Mm -hmm. Can okay. we can can I say that uh, with the NMC they do both the um they do the aesthetic as um uh, as obsessive assessment as well with the Pascal okay. sessions that we do during our, uh -huh. our learning session exams. Okay. So let, let me take the first one and I'll respond to the second one. Oh, but oh, our time is actually up. So we need about uh, some few minutes to ramp up. We have time is actually up. All right. So the first one, good. From mobile uh, static hospitals probably to mobile hospitals or mobile clinics so the results we are comparing results so our first is that our first results you are looking at low low turnout uh, or low attendance then you see that no this resource is not good for us to achieve our goals that we set for the year so we need to change the results by bringing up a second way to achieve results. So you try second again, 
by this time from static you go to mobile mobile setups so yes we can say this is assertive assessment because when you do that the second result that you compare with the mobile the second result you compare has it met your set your set goals and is it better than the previous one so they are both results uh, they are both results we have assessed ourselves and we are using two results and we realize that at the end of the day one will help us to meet our goals so yes i've said if the assessment it could be at that level comparing two results uh, so you do the first one it does not produce the next results then you have to undertake the second one to assess yes so that could be one now the the second example of the NMC exams, in fact, to be frank, the NMC exams that we sit in for, uh, it, it is a multiple form of assessment. I have that NMC exam actually is a multiple form of assessment. So you see that one, one aspect, one aspect of the NMC exams is on the theory aspect, another part is on practical aspect, but both the theory and the practical, they are still all on the same the same set goals. Uh, they are set, still all on the same set goals. They are not on different set goals. They are on the same set goals. Now, the, the problem with this, with the NMC exam is that what you just said, we are looking at the results. The written exams that you do and then the one that you have to do practically. Because you have not seen your performance of the first one, the written results, we, you cannot compare it to the practical one that you do. Uh, so if you do the practical exam first, you don't see the results. Then you do the second one following suit. So it is really not a perfect, it is not a perfect example of assertive assessment because uh, what is your first results that you have got? And the second one, how can you compare the two? Because it's about comparison. It's about comparison of the results. So the, it is not a good example to actually give under a setting. Now, you can use the same NMC, but what you can say is that, for example, the we have people sit for NMC in different forms. Uh, so if you sit for it for two times or three times based on different aspects, then that one could be more of assertive assessment, first one and second one. So you are comparing results. And at the end of the day, we exactly know that this one has helped you more than the other. But the exam on its own, both practical and theory, for now, it will be difficult to compare the results. Okay. So please, let's do the last one, non-reference assessment. So the non-reference assessment, this one, you are comparing individuals, individuals non-reference assessment you are just comparing individuals performance of individuals so one group to another group one group of individual to another group of individuals so remember when we're doing the criterion we're comparing only standards not the individuals but in non-reference we are comparing performance in individuals from one group to the other group so if we write BEC exams, uh, so when you write the BEC exams or the WASI exams or the NMC exams, they compare the performance among individuals from one region to the other region, from one school to the other school. Uh, so they can they can grade everything based on regions, region specific, region specific. Yeah, so that one is not reference. It's not reference assessment. Any assessment that we are trying to look at a uh, performance level among individuals, then it's non-reference assessment. So I know you, you, you may have other questions to ask, uh, but let me take these two hands and we'll close. Our time is, is up. Yes, please, the two hands. Sir. Please. Yes. Uh, please, uh, sorry to ask this in class, but I mm. just have to. Um, okay. Concerning our books, I'm the assistant rep for Tamale, I guess, okay. Branch. 
Okay. And um, we've not received our books yet, so I don't know. And your paper is the first we are to write, Kra. So I just want to find out when Tamale will be getting ours. Oh, Tamale, your books were sent last week. Uh, and your 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 course rep told me that she had received it. But I think the difficulty is that she has not been so well. Uh, I think yeah, so we my... are we are January and August, so I don't know whether you just combined everything. No, I only received request Tamala, I only received requests from January. I haven't mm -hmm. received any requests from August for the books. It's only January that I've requested and I've signed DS. But please, I've not received any requests from August. So maybe I'm yet to receive it. But they are there. If I get it, you'll get it as soon as possible. Yeah. All right. So uh, last concern, then we'll end. Please, last concern. Sir, please, it's not a concern. Hello, with the... Question. OK, yes. With the norm, uh, norm reference assessment. Yes, please. I wanted to use our data analysis. So for example, at times when we are doing your data presentation, we can have okay. like a facility to other facility, or maybe in the okay. same district, we have sub districts. So the yes. performances can be compared uh, within the sub districts under the same district. Yes. Yes. So yes, at your at the the help, the help. Okay. So the review that you do at your various places when you are comparing across. Yes, that is not a reference. You can see the assessment of each facility, the assessment of uh, each sub district. Yes, so all those performers, that, that's actually a normal reference. Thank you. All right. So please. Hello, sir. Yes, Hello, please. sir. And um, please, yes. my concern is with the, with the recordings. If oh, okay, it's okay. possible for you to give us all your recordings so that Whilst we are reading alongside the book, we will be listening to the recordings because sometimes uh, the recordings is more clearer than we reading the book alone. So I'll beseech you if you can give it to us, please. Okay, I will use the IT department. There's a lot of work actually on the IT. It's not it's not an easy thing for them. Uh, there's a lot of work, but there are not many. So please, I will use with them. I know they are busy, but I know they they will. As you said, I'll try so that they'll get it to all of us. Uh, so please, thank you. Thank you for thank today. You thank you for your that. attention. Uh, yes, please. Our time is fast spent. So thank it's you for everything. Information, sir. Yeah, you can chat me later. If you have other, uh, you can chat me later. My email is there. So uh, I wish you a good day Fairness. and all the best. Thank you for your patience. You said the you the number. You said we should charge you the number. Uh, oh, check, check, check the slides I've given you. My number is there. My email is there. So just give us a yeah, gist of the exam. Yeah, how will it be like? Uh, please, we Thank didn't you. talk about the exam, so. Oh, we'll, maybe well, we'll, meet, we'll meet the last time, please. Thank you so much. No, this is the last time. Oh. This is the last time. No problem. Oh. The best. Thank you. We have free period. All the best. Free period. Yeah, please, we have Yes, sir. We can. Please don't go. So you have embryology. We have embryology. Embryology. Pardon? Please, my hand is up. Oh. But they still have some of the eggs. You have embryology, or? Oh. You have embryology. Not now. It's what time? 12 11.45. 11.45. something about the exams, please. Pardon? Uh -huh. Yes. The embryology is 11.45. So please, will it be theory or of this? Yes. You mean the exams? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, the exams. Eighty percent. Eighty percent is of this. Yes. So eighty percent is of this. Uh, so uh, if there's a if there's a theory, but maybe. But eighty percent is of gifts. That is what I want to know. Uh -huh. 
Oh, is that next week? Next week is practical. Is that <laughs> all right? I will communicate the rest yeah, to you. On, it's all on your yes, 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 please. Be no. waiting. Thank you. Yes. I'll communicate to you through your course reps, please. I I know. Uh, so I wish you all the best. Uh, please, the number. I, I can't find the number. The question. Oh, it's on my lecture notes. The number, all my slides, I put my, my Sir, email. We, we will get the slides. Go and ask your class rep and get it, please. Yes, right now. you get it. I've given all to your course. I'll just give it right now, please. Uh, you get it. It will be on your class. All right, so thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Thank you, sir.